Welcome to Only a Podcast. Two blokes upside down and many miles from home talk about popular culture and unpopular culture too. Music, books, films, the news, what we had for dinner last night, anything goes. Apart from politics, probably. Episode 5 Abandoned Books and Character Actors. Right, hey Captain, how you doing? Oh, you're all right. Yeah. How are you doing down there uh, in the, the in, south? In the south, uh, yeah, n- none more south. I'm, I'm south. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right down here. It's um, yeah, it's all right. I've had got a few t- new toys this week, which has been a bit of fun. I've got a new job, so I've treated myself to some new toys. Yeah. So I've got a nice new audio interface for my uh, computer, my Bob. So I'm recording this on that. So uh, hmm. and I'm using a different mic. So I hope all you folks out there can hear this okay. And uh, yeah, I've got me a bass guitar as well couple of days ago which i didn't pay for i just got lucky someone was looking for a uh, they had a bass and they were looking for, to swap for a guitar mm. it just so happened i had exactly the same model or the same range if you like same age same value so it was a dead straight swap so uh my strat went and i got a precision bass i think that's a fourth or fifth strat that's a fender stratocaster for those who don't know an electric guitar uh that's the my fourth or fifth one that i've um got rid of i just <laughs> always want to have a strat and always desire having a strat and I get a strat and I never play the strat because I don't like playing strats so <laughs> that's it no more no there more there may be a lesson learnt yeah I five just always, times yeah I just feel I'm going to break them I'm a bit heavy handed with my guitar playing and I just feel like I'm going to break them they're a bit fragile that's why I I, I mm. plump for the telecaster which is a plank of wood with some wire nailed to it so uh can't break those. So, um, yeah, it's all been uh, ticking along, really. Uh, we had a bit of feedback from our last episode, which was all about special guest appearances, if you remember rightly, and we talked about Adele ticket prices to some length as well. Um, uh, uh, Alex, uh, my friend in the UK, came back with a couple of special guest appearances uh, stories. He, he saw Paul McCartney come on uh, during a uh, Bruce Springsteen gig. Uh, and they played, I saw her standing there, Twist and Shout and La Bamba. Um, oh. Yeah, well, fair mm. enough. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and he also saw uh, Rick Astley come on stage. Um, well, I don't know if he saw it, he mentioned it. Rick Astley, uh, uh, when he came on and, di- and joined the Foo Fighters, and they did Never Gonna Give You Up. That was quite a famous clip at the time. It was a bit, a bit mm. on the viral side, wasn't it? Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, and my, my other good buddy, Craig, in the UK... Um, now this is a good story, this, um, but we need proof, or it didn't happen. Now you've all you all know the the George Michael song, "Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me," and that bit where he says, "Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Elton John," and then Elton John comes on and blah. Uh, well, Craig was actually there at that concert, and it was uh, recorded for for the music video for that song. And Craig claims to have been in the video. If you look closely, he's in there somewhere. So uh, I'm sorry, Craig, but unless you send us uh, proof, well, I don't believe you. So you mm. need to grab a screenshot and. Uh, circle yourself so, and send it in this we'll, is me yeah and we'll, and we'll make it it could be anyone just a random dot obviously <laughs> you, you could lie um but yeah and we'll make you famous if that's the case but that's no, a good one if true and uh just speaking of adele we don't want to become too obsessed with adele but um no. i listened to her album new album today not on shuffle no. not on shuffle but that's another story no it's really good you know i mean it's not my cup of tea um and i probably won't listen to it again but i mean it's it's a fine piece of work i don't know if you've listened to it but um yeah she is the uh the, the real deal really she's she's quite something i think so uh yeah if you're a fan you'll love it i've just heard the single and yeah. uh i saw the clip of her show in london oh yeah where was it was it staged or not no. um where she brought her teacher on no surely uh, not or rather Emma Thompson brought yeah, the yeah. teacher on yeah it's, one, it's um, one, of, one everybody of those everybody cried yeah of course they did yeah it's yeah. one of those audience with things I don't yeah. I, I haven't seen it but it's probably not as good as the Billy Connolly one I'm imagining <laughs> oh dear <laughs> and I think he had uh, Rusty Lee in the audience so beat that um, nothing could be as good as that no no it's, I think it's a little work of genius yeah I've got to say thumbs up for the Adele album um the first track's like a Cole Porter jazz standard. It's beautiful. It's great stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah, good. So, um, yeah, that's the catch-ups from last week. I don't know if you've got anything to catch up on um, 
from last week. Have you, Captain? No, at the moment. Let's, no. let's press on. Let's press on. So we've got a bit to get through. We've got a topic we're yeah. going to do today, uh, which I don't know how we're going to do it. So let's see what happens with it. So um, Anything could happen. Anything as could, said. as we've said before. Yeah, so uh, culture catch-up. So what's, hit, what's caught your eye this week, Captain? OK, well, I've been listening to a Scottish singer-songwriter called Jackie Leaven. Um, I occasionally write for a website called Toppermost, which is basically you wax lyrical about 10 songs that you like from a particular artist, the 10 greatest, in your opinion. And I think um, I saw in advance that someone was going to be doing Jackie Leaven, uh, which made me go, yeah, I should listen to him again a lot. So I have. Um, He's a sort of Caledonian soul artist. He's a great guitarist he has his own style um he used to be in a way new wave band called doll by doll who uh, had a minor i hesitate to say hit but uh, uh um they were a good band uh in 1984 uh he was assaulted in the street um and damaged his throat and larynx or rather somebody damaged his throat and larynx and he couldn't speak properly for a couple of years, I think, before before he got better. Um, and then he descended into uh, a bit of drug hell, um, maybe due to medication initially, but um, certainly into heroin. Um, but once he came out of that, uh, in the early 90s, I think, he was incredibly prolific, um, making up for lost time, I guess, um, and under his own name and a couple of pseudonyms as well. He he really knocked out the albums. Um, And a guy called Andrew Shields uh, wrote the toppermost top ten, in his opinion, of Jackie Leaven's songs. And I'm going to put the link to that in the show notes so that if you want to listen to him, you can get a start with those ten songs. It's as good as anything. Oh, cool. Uh, If you like Van Morrison uh, or... Bruce or Tom Petty or the Water Boys, um, then Jackie Leaven will be right up your street. Oh, um, I've got to say, I've yeah. never heard of Jackie Leaven, never. Which is, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's also a good um, 20, 25 minute documentary from Scottish TV on YouTube as well. Um, well, f- from that, uh, that takes me nicely into ABBA, I guess. Um, I, I'm doing a review of the new ABBA album. Yeah, uh, in less than 30 seconds. I reckon I can do it in 15. Um, it sounds okay. like the Eurovision Song Contest. It's fine. It's ABBA, but a bit older. It's it's great. If you like ABBA, you're going to love it. There's one track on there, uh, track number three. Let me just click on my thing. It's called Little Things. And I don't know if getting a Christmas number one is still a thing, still something bands aspire to, but Little Things has got Christmas number one written all over it. I mean... Um, yeah, it's a Christmas song. It's, mm-hmm. I don't know if it was a, a deliberate ploy by them to try and hit the Christmas market. I don't know if they've ever had a Christmas number one, but um, yeah, so uh, ABBA, yeah, done. A uh, few other things um, this week. Uh, I've watched a couple of movies. Uh, one I've been meaning to watch for ages and just got round to it. It's a movie called The Dig, which I think you've seen it as well, Captain, have you? Yeah, um, that was good. Uh, Rafe Fiennes and uh, Kerry Mulligan, I think it is. Uh, and it's based on the true story yeah. of the the, uh, the big archaeological find at Sutton Hoo uh, in the 1940s. And uh, I won't give any spoilers away, but it's just one of those really nice films. There's nothing horrible or nothing, you know, it's one for all the family. Uh, yeah, really good story. So, yeah, that's a good one. Um, I started a new book this week, um, a book called American Dirt by Janine Cummins. Uh, it was recommended to my wife by a friend of hers who'd read it and then my wife read it and said I should read it so I've, I've started it. Uh, it's a story of a, a, a woman in Mexico um, and her husband and all of her family really are are murdered by the, the, drug, uh, the drug cartel because her husband was a journalist and he wrote stuff about them that they didn't want him to write. So uh, her son, her and her 10-year-old son managed to escape. They managed to hide and they, they, never, they weren't killed, so they have to go on the run. Uh, and, yeah, um, that's, that's the story. They, they break for the border and try and get into the America. 
Now, um, in researching uh, a bit further for this, I, I found there's a bit of controversy around it, actually, because it's written by a non-Mexican and it's, you know, cultural misappropriation or whatever, um, you know, telling the story of a Mexican immigrant uh, being a, a white American. So there's a bit of contra- controversy there. But um, it's, a, mm. it's a great story, I think. I'm, I'm only, you know, a quarter of the way in at the moment. But, um, yeah, I'll keep you posted on that. Um, TV wise so I finally got round to Ted Lasso a few people have told me I should be watching Ted Lasso uh, the reason I haven't watched it so far is because I thought it was American because <clears throat> I just heard snippets are oh, American soccer coach that's all I'd heard so I thought oh no I don't really want to watch that yeah. but it's not it's British it's British there's a lot of British actors in it that you'd, you'd know uh, and it's about a British football club that the chairman uh, is forced to leave. He's a bit disgraced, stuff he's done in his per- in his personal life and the chairman's wife is left in charge of the club and she wants to run the club into the ground. So she hires an American coach who knows nothing about soccer at all. And it's it's hilarious. It's really, really, really good. I'm, I'm loving it. I'm sort of binging it at the moment. So I've almost finished uh, Series 1 this week. Um, so that's very, very good. Uh, also another cool. series which um, actually Captain you reminded me of because you said you'd started watching it and you reminded me that I started watching it about oh god two years ago or more and I forgot yeah. I watched the first two and I forgot all about it so I've got back into that so you might want you finished it haven't you so you might want to give give the lowdown on this I one I certainly have yes I reminded you of uh, Criminal UK the premise of which is uh, it's filmed in an interview room in a police station um, and it goes on for about 45 minutes and a suspect or otherwise is interviewed and it's how the case is solved, if you like, in those 45 minutes of I, interrogation. I should add, it's a, um, it's a drama. It's not a, uh, it's not a documentary. It is a drama. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a new kind of thing for me, really. I, you know, it's, it's a police procedural um in its purest it form, is, yeah. I guess. There, you know, there's nobody racing around in police cars and nicking people and putting them in handcuffs and uh, none of that kind of action goes on. It's all about the interview, mm. as it were, the interrogation. Um, and it's great. I don't... I didn't quite understand how it could be that suspenseful. Yeah. It's all in I one room, it. isn't it? A couple of people across um, an interview table and that's it. It's, it's literally in one room in a police station and the people yes. the other side yeah. of the and one-way glass as well the other yeah. side of the glass so, yeah it's really yeah. good because it, it, you think okay well the, this person's being interviewed being questioned about a crime and then it takes a twist it's brilliant writing I don't know who wrote it but it's, it's very very good and uh, some big names in there act, big name actors in there as well yeah David yeah. Tennant is in yeah. the first one um, doing his yeah. psycho yeah. Gimlet <laughs> eyed yeah, <that's> <laughs> yeah. thing uh, really well um, yeah it's yeah. it's great. Uh, yeah, so that's the culture catch up. Have you got any more to say on that, um, Captain? That's all from me for okay. this particular one. Um, right, we're going to do two main topics today. One's going to be all right, and one I'm not sure how it's going to land. Uh, so, so let's see how we go. Uh, we've got our little document here, but I reckon we ought to do the first one first. Uh, the second one first. So that is the topic of abandoned books. Now, this came up when uh, you, you, you started reading a book and you just binned it because you just weren't, weren't getting on with it. And uh, you said, OK, so, uh, well, OK, did you ever do that? And I said, yeah, I've done that a few times. And we, we actually put the word out on our socials and we got quite a response from, from people, actually. So yeah. maybe we'll dive into those first, shall we? So um, yeah. so, so uh, I'll start off with, with Joe, uh, a regular, regular contributor to the show. Hello, Joe. Um, he, he talks about the Game of Thrones books. He said, got about halfway through the first one, got totally bored and bewildered by the hundreds of characters you're supposed to keep track of. Uh, He said he loved the TV show, though. Um, So, yeah, a lot of people speak very highly about those books. I never read the books. Um, I did try the TV show. I got to about season three. Uh, I gave up, really. uh, I I think I don't like anything that's got swords in it, really. That's that's my... (laughs) That's Mm. that's how I judge a a TV show or a movie. If it's got swords, I'm not really too interested. Uh, We had um, some comments from uh, Twitter, uh, Superana, um, who said he he didn't finish um, Book of Dave by Will Self. and if you read the plot of Book of Dave, people, you might know why, because it seems to be uh, 
quite an obnoxious premise um, for I think the two short stories that are in that book um, if I remember correctly um, yeah I wouldn't run or finish that one either I don't think I've ever read any Will Self um, oh, I read a couple back in the day um, mm. uh, yeah you, you need uh, the Will Self novel in one hand and a dictionary in the other hand because you're, you're looking up a word on every page that you don't know but, there um, was all that kind of kind of 90s loaded loaded mag recommendations that you yeah. read of, of which obviously the train spotting and Irving yeah. Walsh yeah. Uh, came along at the same time there was That's an awful right. lot of uh, uh, stuff going on yeah I was reading a lot of Martin Amis at that time yeah um, yeah yeah great great stuff a lot of it was great stuff yes yeah, so we got a couple more from Instagram but um, our friend Katie from Christchurch I tend to finish books because I hate leaving them unfinished and I can't remember the last book I purposefully abandoned now that's what I used to be like um, but now I'm very old <laughs> then you get middle aged um, <laughs> shit it's like, right, there are better things to be doing or there are more books to yeah. be read I, I don't have the patience to, to continue with one quite so much as I used to um and uh, Chops is on there, Chopstick 68. Um, he thinks it's OK to give up on a book. Oh, that's good. Um, sometimes it's better just to read something you enjoy. And I wholeheartedly Absolutely. agree with that yeah. these days. Um, he did abandon Moby Dick on his first attempt. We all? He's in the middle of, <laughs> middle of another go. Uh, it's hard going, but he's determined to finish it. So um, there we go. Um, and, and another one. Um, another person who is determined to finish well not quite so determined perhaps um, but New Zealand's uh, finest craft beer blogger uh, Phil Walter um, if we ever do a beer episode we'll, we'll get yep. Phil on um, but he, he told me he's on page 94 of a book called uh, Came a Hot Friday um, after about 10 years <laughs> um, he has the bookmark he, 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 he takes it away with him regularly and he never gets around to it. Um, right, we've, we've got to get him on to do a review uh, in yeah. 2047. <laughs> Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. So I think that's, that's all more from the socials. Um, my books, uh, which sparked this whole thing off, um, the book I have most recently um, sent to the Second Hand Bookshop I think, if it's gone. Um, there's a book called Cloud Atlas by um, a chap called David Mitchell. Uh, not the English comedian raconteur David Mitchell, but another one. Um, and I thought, oh, I like that. I, having read the, the description of it and the blurb, sounds like my kind of thing. It's a kind of inter, interlocked set of short stories. Um, and there's... Uh, a plot which flows through all those stories. Uh, characters are mentioned, um, letters from a character in a previous story I read in a subsequent one, and all that kind of thing. And I quite like that kind of stuff. Um, uh, one of my favourite books is a book called Cryptonomicon by uh, predominantly a science fiction writer called Neil Stevenson. Mm. And I thought, well, I like Cryptonomicon. Cloud Atlas sounds right up my alley, and I just didn't get on with it. I just rest I restarted it about five or six times. Um, I didn't find, I didn't think that the writing was as clever as a lot of people seem to think it is. Mm. So I stopped. Well done. <laughs> um, the other one I didn't like for a different reason, was a crime novel called Dark Pines by an English guy called Will Dean, who I think lives in Sweden. Mm. Uh, so I thought, oh, you know, Scandi Noir, that kind of thing. Um, but he wrote um, as the character of uh, quite a young, and I think deaf, Swedish female. And... OK, it might not be for me to, to say uh, who says what or what sounds like what a female would say, but it just did not ring 
true mm, yeah. to me. He just, I don't think uh, Will got it right, and that irritated the hell out of me. And I couldn't, I couldn't read it because I couldn't take the character yeah. seriously. Yeah, but I've read, I've read other books um, with the same uh, kind of situation. Roddy Doyle um, wrote a book about. Uh, it was called The Woman Who Walked Into Doors. Oh yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, about uh, Paula Spencer. And when mm. Roddy wrote Paula, I believed in her greatly. Yeah. Um, but Dark Pines by Will Dean? Nope. Nope. Sorry. What I was just going to ask bin? you, how do you feel about the, 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 the classics? Because oh. I know, um, I mean, I've never really, even really gone there with the classics, a uh, bit of no. Oscar Wilde and stuff, but I know my, my, my good wife, she'll pick up one of these... Uh, Big, 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 thick books. The Count of Monte Cristo, Cristo, and Don Quixote, and books like that. And she just, she loves them. She loves those old books, all written mm. in, uh, you know, all that old-fashioned jive talk. And uh, yeah, I just can't be Shakespeare. She loves it. Um, but, yeah, I just can't be doing with all that. I think that's the thing. Um, a friend of mine, who we will actually talk about in the next section. Um, you know, he was oh, test. You know, Thomas Hardy. You should be. Mm. You should yeah. read Tess of the D'Urbervilles. It's brilliant. Um, I can't. I think, as you say, I can't do the cadence of the language, if that's yeah. what it's called. Yeah. It, it just, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I, is, it, is it too hard to read? Oh, makes me sound like a terrible weed, but um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> oh, it's too hard. Um, but it is, it just doesn't flow. A book has to yeah. flow when I'm reading it. I don't like to, to have to yeah, work just at work it. hard at the reading part. Yeah. Um, I could I could deal with complicated ideas, but um, but they have to be expressed in a way in which I could read them easily. Um, yep, and that doesn't always happen. Yeah. So um, okay. Yeah. No. Good stuff. So mine. I've got a few. Uh, I'll rattle through them quite quickly. So there's one. Uh, probably the most recent one that I I, I binned was a book which was is called The Hidden Life of Trees by a German uh, forester called Peter v- Volleben, I suppose you pronounce it Volleben, W-O-H-L-L-E-B-E-N. Um, and he studied trees for years and it's a really good topic uh, and something I'm really interested in. And there's some fascinating stuff in there. I mean, really fascinating stuff. Um, you know, how trees communicate with each other, you know, the story of these trees and if, uh, and one of them starts getting eaten by a, a giraffe and it sends the pheromones to the other trees to... to put poison into their leaves so they won't get eaten and yeah amazing stuff um but it just it was it's kind of written like a high school essay Mm. it's like chapter one this all this stuff happens chapter two some different stuff happens and you know it didn't flow uh and just uh, yeah i just wasn't enjoying the 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 writing of it really i don't know if it's a translation thing because maybe he wrote it in german originally i don't know but but there is a, a film has been made of it which uh, there's a, tra- a trailer for it on on YouTube, which we can share in the show notes. And the, I will definitely be watching the film. It looks fantastic. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't get on with the book. He's written another one about animals as well, which we've got here. So I might have a go at that at some point. Uh, another one talking about the classics, or you know, these um, hundred books to read before you die. Um, you know, and we, we, yeah, all of those. And one of one that always appears on that list is Catch Twenty Two. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been there or finished it or started yep. it or whatever, but couldn't go, Done. couldn't get on with that one. I, I suspect it was probably great when you got to the end, but just moving so slowly. I think people had more more time on their hands back in the day, so books could move along more slowly. Yeah, um, I did read it. Um, I have read it quite a bit. Mm. Um, I didn't dare go near the series that was on the George Clooney driven oh, Catch-22 yeah. series, yeah. Uh, just in case it destroyed the book for me. Um, so well, I, I may have to do that one day. It's funny you should say that, because my next one is a case of exactly that. So um, there's a, a, a fantastic book called The Luminaries by Eleanor yeah. Catton, mm. uh, which won all kinds of prizes a few years ago. Uh, and it's about the, uh, the, the the gold rush in New Zealand and... Uh, all the gold mining that was going on and uh, a pretty pretty big book pretty um you know an yeah. epic you could say and i was i was kind of halfway through it and i was loving it it was it was really really good and then tvnz over here made a, a tv 
series of it, the drama series, uh, which I guess got shown around the world. I don't know, but um, certainly was a big deal over here. Uh, so I started watching that and I thought, it's OK, I'm halfway through the book. You know, I'm not going to I can stay ahead of the TV series and, you know, <laughs> avoid spoilers. Well, they messed with the timeline so much they in did. the TV series. So, you know, episode one, I'm seeing stuff that I haven't seen in the book. And I'm, it's just spoiler from episode one. So I carried on with the TV series and I uh, gave up on the book in the end. So maybe mm. I'll go back to that one day as well. Um yeah, which is a shame because that's the reason I abandoned it because it was because I got these spoilers from the TV, no other reason. Mm. Uh, and one last one, which we've all started and we've all abandoned, uh, <laughs> is, is uh, we've all got to page 12, uh, A Brief History of Time, Stephen Hawking. Remember when that was on everyone's uh, coffee table Yeah, uh, a few years back? Uh, I clearly was never going to finish it. I don't know if you did. Did you fin- manage to finish it? Oh, no, no. No. I, no, I don't no. think I... Did I even start? I can't remember. It's thought I'll, I'll read. I'll read something easier like Ulysses or something like that. <laughs> War and Peace. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that that's uh, abandoned books. So if you've got anything you want to share with us, dear listeners, on that front, let us know. You know where to get hold of us. Uh, okay. So our second mm. subject, which we're going to try and tackle now, we've uh, I don't know who thought of it. You or me? Can't remember. No. But. Um, I saw a picture, uh, in fact, there's a a Twitter uh, account that I follow called at Classic Britcom. They always post in uh, these pictures of these people and you think, oh my God, I know them, I recognise them. Uh, So I started scrolling back through their feed and there's all these actors, brilliant actors, and you have no idea what their name is. But you know, it might be quite Britain-centric, I don't know, but I guess other, you know, British TV goes all around the world, so Mm. I guess a lot of you will recognise these these uh these names uh so i i you know, i sat down for half an hour and i came up with a huge list which i've got in front of me now i'm not sure how to present it in an audio format so um i think your list is a bit smaller and you've got a bit more to say so i think i might let you go first and then i'll just <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i'll put the kettle on i don't okay. know but yeah you want to go with uh, yours uh, yeah I mean, basically, uh, the thing I like to say about New Zealand is that, okay, um, neither of us is probably qualified to comment, um, so maybe there is a New Zealander out there who who could say more about it. But I will say that, obviously, the New Zealand talent pool, whilst very good, is very small. There's only seven of them, and they're in everything. There's only seven actors in New Zealand. <laughs> and, well, and comedians. So you, yeah. Yeah, So right. you are going to see people in series is um, all the time um, it's amazing you get like these uh, stand-up comedians that do these panel shows these comedy quiz shows and then they're presenting baking shows and then they're in a police drama the following week it's and then a soap opera yeah it's great yeah versatile yeah it's yeah. good if you like them uh yeah <laughs> But uh, I, I mean, what we kind of wanted to do with this slot is, is it just a little bit different. It's it's people you've seen in in quite big films, theatre productions, uh, who are always around, but you just don't know who they are. They're they're not they're super famous, but they're all they always seem to be there. And I I got to start with one whose speech uh, patterns. Basically, uh, gave us a catchphrase. Me and my mate Simon uh, from Brighton um, were mildly obsessed with a Welsh actor called Talfrin Thomas, uh, yeah, who is probably most famous for being one of Dad's army. He was he was Private Cheeseman in Dad's army, and some he was always he could always be relied upon to turn up and add a bit of Welshness to. Uh, <laughs> To sitcoms <laughs> and films. A lot of Welshness. Uh, a lot of Welshness, yeah. in fact. Yeah. Um, and he might never have said the words, yes, indeed. <laughs> but me and me and Simon uh, thought he did. And uh, or, or <laughs> that, that just became part of our speech. It became a thing we would say every now and again to each other. And we would know that it was Talfred Thomas. It, it sounds incredibly train spottery. But... Um, he was just one of those guys, and you, and you look up Telfrey Thomas on, uh, as in all of these chaps that we're going to mention, and the things they've been in is is amazing. I'm just going to uh, uh, butt in and say sorry. Um, 
we uh, we encourage you to hit pause and go to Google while you're listening to this. Hit pause, <laughs> go to Google and look up these names because you won't and know the names. It's just oh, random yeah. names. But then you go, ah, oh, yeah, I remember them. They were in guy. Sweeney or... Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, carry yeah. on. No, that's fine. Oh, the other thing about uh, me and my mate Simon is that Simon's dad was one of these guys. Uh, his name was Walter Sparrow. Um, and he's been in big films. He's been in the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. Um, he was in a, an art house film called Prometheus. Uh, many, many more things. Um, quite often, um, his character name was uh, Tramp or <laughs> Old Man. Yeah. The Tramp, um, yeah. Because that's but it's facially. He's got a lived in face. The, I'm just those Googling the him things. right now. Yeah, those I don't even know. Yeah. And I know, for, I know, obviously, because Simon told me, that um, his dad was in a beer advert, a, a very uh, famous one. And I can I remember for the life of me. I've been John Smith, through, was it? Possibly. I've been through YouTube all this week to try and find this damn advert. Uh, I'd failed, but it, it may still be there. And basically, it's he's an old man in a pub. And I think the... The gist of it is that someone comes up and says, things must have changed since you were a lad. And, of uh, course, they haven't really because the beer's traditional and all that kind of thing. Um, I forget uh, the beer. I forget the line. Uh, OK, well, there's a challenge was, for the listeners. But it was Walter, Walter Sparrow. Sparrow. Yeah, yeah, good one. OK. Oh, I'm going to be serious again in a minute. Oh, oh never hello. mind. Uh, female character actors. Uh, no, that wasn't so much... As Part of our list, but I thought we ought to we ought to go there a little bit. Um, and um, throughout British comedy of the sixties and seventies, there were a certain type of Amazonian woman who would fill the role um, in you know carry on films and that kind of stuff. Uh, there are there are several I could mention. Um, Valerie Leon is probably yep. uh, the best one of those. Um, in a sort of man dominating role in a aftershave commercial, uh, mm. that kind of thing. She's really carry-on films. Um, she was Caroline car- Munro. Carry-on up, up the jungle, was it? Was that? Uh, it ooh, could was be. That her, carry-on up the could jungle? Could be. Mm. Anyway, yeah. Uh, the other one, um, oh, I've got to mention two more. The other one is Caroline Munro, who yep. has been in all sorts of things. Um, yep. uh, Hammer horror films quite a lot, uh, lots of ads. Um, she was in The Spy Who Loved Me. Yeah, she was, a, yeah. A va- was she a villain? I think so. Vaguely like villainous. Fatale kind of thing, Heli- yeah. Helicopter piloting. Mm. Femme fatale, yeah. Mm. Um, and a TV ad for cigars. Mannequin cigars, which was quite risque for the time, oh. as I remember. Um, yeah. But um, like from that kind of school, um, Imogen Hassel is, is one I'd like to remember, uh, remember here. Um, you know, she had classical training. She went to the Royal Ballet School. She was at the RSC for a season. Um, she was in things like The Saints and The Avengers. Um, and she was in Carry On Loving. Um, she oh, yeah. was astonishingly attractive. And I became aware of her as a character. Um, there was a stage show at the National Theatre, which I was fortunate enough to see uh, on its first run, called Cleo Camping, Emmanuel and Dick. Ah, oh, brilliant, yeah. And it, it has a TV adaptation called Call Blimey, and it was yep. mostly about um, Sid James and Barbara. Uh, and the, the character, uh, Imogen Hassel was a character in that play, and it was she was kind of a, uh, the tragic character at the time because being classically trained, um, she... Uh, despaired at not being able to get roles where she could be taken seriously and rather was just a body um, Mm. in a a brief flash of a comedy film. Um, And that kind of mental health problem and a series of personal tragedies that she had led to her taking her own life at 38. Yeah. And that's that, that struck home. Quite yeah, a tragic story that one. Yeah, I looked when, when I saw you were going to talk about this. I looked it up. I didn't know. I, I recognised her um, from yeah. the things you said, but yeah, I didn't know. Didn't know her story. Yeah, yeah. Tragic. Again, it's um, you look at the things she's been in. Uh, mm. you, oh yeah, Imogen Hassel. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. we come to to lighten the mood. Yeah, uh, more than a little. Uh, the daddy of all character actors for me uh, is a chap called Brian Glover. Uh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, Bread went out, taken out. If you if you need a northerner with the crew cuts, um, <laughs> uh, Brian's your man uh, from Sheffield. He was a teacher, but he was a wrestler in his early life. Um, he, <laughs> for some reason, portraying a French guy. Um, he was known as he was known as Leon Arras, the man from Paris, <laughs> on the wrestling stage. Um, good Lord, why would you? You know. Anyway, I guess they they needed Different someone times. that they needed someone the audience could hate, <laughs> and, and maybe maybe a Frenchman was it? That'll do it. Uh, yeah. I'm really not sure. But when he was when he was teaching, they met um, Barry Hines, who was the director of the film Kes, yep. and he got the role of Sugden. It was a kind of absurd, blustering sports teacher that uh, plagues Billy Casper. Um, uh, he thinks he's got a gift to football, basically, and he goes out in a Manchester United strip and he's rubbish and overweight and terrible. Um, and he was also uh, Flint in an episode of Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads called No oh, Hiding yeah. Place, yep. which is possibly the most famous sitcom episodes in the UK yep. ever, or well, certainly yep. one of them in the 70s. Uh, it's basically where Terry and Bob um, try to avoid hearing the score of an England match, which is played during the day, because they want to watch it on TV that evening, and Flint bets them a tenner. They'll never hold out, um, and he pursues them for the rest of the episode, trying to tell <laughs> them the score, and they run away from him. Uh, and I won't blow the ending if nobody's seen that episode. Um, so, so Brian Glover is in two of the classic moments in English comedy history. Um, just there. What else has he been in? Um, he was uh, Heslop, the uh, dim-witted inmate in Porridge. Yep. Uh, he was the voice of the boss of the Tetley Tea Fork. In the advert, uh, he was in Alien 3, for God's sake. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. And, I, and as I read, he, he once lost a screen fight to John Wayne in oh. the film Brannigan. Um, oh, wow. He was in the Royal Court. He was in the RSC. Uh, he, he did the lot. Look him up. Uh, he, he's, he's the man. Uh, um Right, well, I've got a list I don't know what I'm going to do with it, as I said at the start. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read the names out. Uh, and this can be homework for the listeners um, because one or two of them, if I say the name, you might know the faces out there, but uh, um, but you probably won't. So, no, I didn't. Ag- again, this is um, classic Britcom on Twitter. Uh, I just scrolling through, I came across these actors. So I'm going to read them out and you can pause it and have a look and you go, ah, oh, yeah, and if any of you can remember <laughs> what any of them were in. If you've got any memories of any of them, let me know. So it's a bit of a list, so I'm just going to go for it. So um, we've got Roy Holder. We've got Anthony Woodruff. We've got Gerard Horan. We've got Derek Francis. David Batley. Norman Bird. Hugh Futcher. Robin Parkinson. And Harold Goodwin. Uh, and there's one more I'll come back to. Um, I could have gone on and on and on. I, I, I had loads more. Um I don't, yeah, I, I, it blew my mind actually because it's like, yeah, I know all of these faces but I had no idea what their names was, names were. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, have, have a look and let me know if you've got any, any memory or recollection of any of them. Um, one on the list was Harry Andrews who I think caught your eye, yeah. Captain, a wee bit. Yeah, but I, I thought I kind of know who that is and I, I looked and, yep, yeah, that's him. And as I said, if you need chiselled chap with military bearing um, he was your man uh, he was in 633 Squadron and Ice Cold in Alex and The Hill with Sean Connery um, he was an actor of the old Vic for many years and the things he's been in um, <laughs> we, we don't you know we could go on for another hour just talking about um, the major films that he's been in mm. but, but hardly ever what you'd call Household well, name. A major role. No, uh, not mm. a major role in there. But mm. um, the sort of reliable fellow um, that could come in and do a job. Um, Charge of the Light Brigade, you know, all those kind of films. Yeah, yeah. Um, Slightly typecast there. there, yeah. Slightly, but yeah. my God, he got a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he done all right, eh? Yeah. yeah. 
Right. Well, we've gone on for quite a bit. I think we've covered yes. everything. Uh, yeah, it's been a, been a big one, this one, I think. Uh, so, yeah, if, uh, get in touch. If you any of those names that we've uh, talked about ring any bells or if you've abandoned yeah. any books or if you've got any thoughts on anything else we've talked about or if you've got any thoughts on anything we haven't talked about, um, get in touch. That just leaves one more thing, I think. It could be the joke. The joke, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you know, um, as you all know, I keep a pet snail um, and I, I enter him into races. You know, he's a competitive sports racing snail, but he's not been doing very well. He's not been winning any races or anything. So I've been scratching my head trying to think, how can I just make him a little bit faster? Then it occurred to me, I'm going to take that shell off. He's got this big shell, it's really heavy. It's bound to make him faster. So I took the shell off didn't really work to be honest he ended up being more sluggish <laughs> anyway yeah so that's that then yeah right all good yep should we say goodbye captain goodbye captain okay see you later folks you've been listening to only a podcast if you'd like to get in touch and share your feedback and ideas we'd love to hear from you go to onlyapodcast.com or you can find us at only a podcast on twitter and instagram or via our Facebook page. Remember, it's only a podcast. Mm-hmm.